All right, uh, I'm recording again. Can somebody, um, um, you guys can hear me, right? Can somebody give me a confirmation that my audio is okay? All right, great, I got one. So, um, all right, good. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here and we'll get started. Uh, da -da. There we go, should be able to see my screen now. So, um, as usual for these sessions, I mean, I, I, if I was doing these sessions in person, basically what I would do is I would go through the assignment step by step. Um, I, um, uh, and, and I'll get started here on the assignment three and then give, you know, some time uh, for people to work on it uh, on their own and ask questions. So, you know, so, so it would be good to get into the habit to actually uh, be working on it. I hope everybody has maybe had a chance to at least look at the assignment three, if not start it. Um, I have, I've completed assignment ones, just, just to let people know. Uh, assignment twos, I'm, I'm basically done with them, although I haven't um, put on like the, the final grade yet, um, but uh, well, I haven't put on the grade in the grade book yet. So um, I did give some announcements about kind of the assignments. So my basic workflow, you know, that um, now that I've seen a little bit how the GitHub class is gonna work, uh, just for you guys to know, um, I mean, so starting with assignment three, probably, I mean, you should do the assignment by the due date, which is midnight, by Tuesday or Thursday, uh, I probably won't usually start working on them until the, the next morning, but still I'm, I might start grading at midnight or before, especially anybody that looks like they're done. I'll, I'll, I'll try and be monitoring people that are doing the assignments um, on, on Tuesday um, and give at least my preliminary kind of thing and see if I wanted to add any issues that needed to be completed or, or am ready to accept it, you know. But anyway, um, so yeah, my goal is usually going to be I'm going to give kind of an evaluation um, on the morning after, so uh, Wednesday morning for assignment three. Um, and at that point, um, I'll either accept it if there are no issues or give you some more issues. Um, if I give you some more issues, you should try and uh, um, respond with those and complete those so I can close you off, you know, before the end of, of that day, you know, preferably before like 4 or 5 p.m. or something um, on Wednesday. So I'm basically going to give like a, what's known as a code review, uh, plus I'll give kind of um, um, that um, comments that I'm giving with sort of a checklist and I might add more issues then that have to be completed. So, um, all right, so we've, we've got what I think of as the usual schedule this week. So there's a quiz due today, um, and then the assignment three is due tomorrow, and then we have our uh, next unit four uh, on Wednesday, Thursday, um, with a quiz on Wednesday and the assignment four on Thursday. Um, also, you should know that our first midterm test is coming up um, on this week. So it'll be open starting on um, Thursday. So you can start it as early as that. It, it's, it has like a two hour time limit, um, but you can, you can go up till Saturday midnight. So once you start it, you'll have the two hour time limit, but you can start anytime from Thursday through Saturday uh, night um, on kind of the midterm test. So the midterm test is gonna be a review of the units one, two, three, four material. So that's classes, arrays, dynamic memory allocation. Um, um, and then the stuff we're looking at this week, recursion, uh, analysis of algorithms, things like that, so searching and sorting. So um, the questions are more like, um, usually they're, they're more like some coding questions. So there'll be some true false questions where I give you some code or multiple choice give you some code and you pick the right output. There'll be other questions where, you know, I'd ask you kind of to write a function uh, in the test. So you have a text box and you're supposed to write the function there, that kind of thing. So they, they should be similar to the quizzes kind of, um, although there might not be as many multiple choice and true false questions. So more kind of like coding or 
Um, uh, there'll be others like, for example, um, you're going to be doing searching and sorting this week. So there'll be questions like, um, OK, here's a list of unsorted items. Show me what it looks like after the first pass of a bubble sort and the second pass. So show me all the passes of a bubble sort or all the passes of an insertion sort, things like that. All right, other procedural questions? Um, the, the, the midterm test is due uh, this week because um, uh, these are like five week courses, but it's not complete. The, our fifth week is actually done on Thursday. So starting this week, you should maybe also, or at least starting next week, you should kind of be aware of that. So like on the, the, the fifth week, uh, we will have a final exam, but it will be done on Thursday. Um, so on Thursday, you will have the, the last assignment 10 due uh, and then the final exam. So, you know, it's usually a good idea to start trying to shift a day or two earlier, starting with the third week for these uh, summer uh, five week courses um, um, so that you're ready to do kind of that slightly abbreviated week, every, have everything wrapped up by Thursday um, on our last week. You know. Um, all right. So, um, if you guys know how to use your, um, what do they call them? The, um, uh, the, the reactions, uh, try and figure those out. Um, so like thumbs up, thumbs down. So basically let's, let's get started on this. I haven't even started on, uh, accepting the assignment yet here. Um, um, but as usual, you should have a, um, acceptance link. for the clap for the assignment. There we go. And um, I've had a couple of people rearranging teams and stuff. It might not be finding it so easy to work on teams when you're required to actually all be contributing commits and stuff. So, but anyway, um, I mean, you know, as usual, it won't um, ask you for your, uh, to, to pick your name and pick your team, but I can take you off a team if you need to, although hopefully teams have kind of formed by now. So. So yeah, if you're going to be following along with me on our uh, hack session here, um, you should go ahead and get the preliminary steps done. So I'll just remind you. So once you've accepted the assignment, you should have access to your starting repository um, for your yourself or your team. Um, um, as usual, then uh, we need to do these steps. Um, so we've accepted the assignment and got the copy of it. Um, we should clone the assignment to our uh, develop, local development environment. So I'll copy that um, SSH URL. You should already have SSH and everything set up. Um, you should go to your Visual Studio and um, ask to clone the repository for assignment three, clone it into your assignment subdirectory. Um, I've still had a few people having problems with the um, code formatter. Um, if you if you ever get an error, um, I've, I've found out that there might be an issue with the um, uh, installed IntelliSense extension for some people. If you ever get a message about the it's something like the code server is crashed or something like that. Uh, let me know that that might be affecting your your code format as well that the solution is you have to like uh, uninstall the extension and reinstall it um, but the basic issue is they've they've released like a new version 1.4.1 and uh, yeah the language server crashes um, so if you're still getting that let me know the, the way you kind of have to do is you have to uninstall this and you have to reinstall that if you reinstall um, from the the um, marketplace um it doesn't install the right one so you do have to uh, install from the um um 
you have to download the file and install it correctly. Unfortunately, the file that I gave you, I think is 1.4.0. And so if you install from that file now, uh, it detects that the version is behind, it tries to update it, but it updates with the wrong one. So it's, uh, for some reason, it's probably a bug, but it, yeah, it's giving you, I mean, it should be installing the Linux one, but it installs um, the wrong version. So you do end up having to install it by hand. So, so yeah, if anybody's kind of seen that issue, let me know um, um, what we can get you um, um, set up. So, so where was I? Um, so I did um, clone my repository. Let me open that workspace up. Um, I, I guess I've already got it open. Yeah, I've already got it opened up. Um, so, um, as usual, you should oh, you should configure. Make certain that you do the configuration step. So. open up a terminal and do it .configure. Um, that, that's another reason why you might not be getting your formatting to work correctly. So until you do the configure, it hasn't set up your uh, settings and some other stuff. Um, uh, while I'm on the issue of, of configuration, the easiest way to check that you're using the, the class style uh, code formatting is if you, put a, if you put an opening brace at the end of the line, and you hit save and it doesn't reformat it to put the opening brace on a line of its own. Um, uh, either you haven't done the configure or, or it's possible that your um, IntelliSense extension is having issues. So, but, but that's one way to confirm it. So, um, once you configure, uh, can always confirm that the project builds and runs. So if you do a control shift one, should clean it. Control Shift Two or Control At, or also Control um, B um, should build do a make all. Um, you can tell that it's building cleanly if if you get back to the message that the terminal will be reused. If instead you see either a compile error or a link error, um, it's not build building cleanly and something's amiss. So you need to figure that out before you try and move forward. And then for assignment three, if you do control shift three to run the tests, um, it is actually running some tests this time. So, so there are some tests uncommented. These are tests of the list class that I give you, which I'll talk about here. So, oops. All right. Um, so I think we completed. Um, oh, and um, yeah, so you can go ahead and create your issues uh, for, for um, Assignment three as well. So for this assignment, we've got what um, six issues again this time, or was it five? Six issues. Yep. So I'll go ahead and create those. All right. So give me a thumbs up um, if I can go and continue, or if you have a question about getting. Um, um, things set up for assignment three. There's test one, test two. All right, mostly thumbs up to continue here. Test three. And um, yeah, I won't do the rest of them here, but yeah, you can do, do them or you can do them one at a time. Um, and if I remember, I usually like to then uh, start working on issue one by linking it to the pull request and then do them one at a time. That's my prefer personal preference is that um, um, you link your issue, you work your issue, push your commit to finish that issue and then close off the issue, right? And often a pull request is only going to be just one issue that you work and complete, but, but sometimes it can be two or three related issues, kind of like we do. So. All right, with that, we're ready to go ahead and um, start on the assignment. I'm going to open up two tabs here, so I can have one always open up on my assignment description here. So. Um, in this assignment, you're actually going to be using a list 
the, the list class. Um, so your, um, uh, you don't have to actually write anything for this list class, but um, your functions that you have to write. Um, so, so this assignment is about recursion. Um, so you're writing three actual different versions, but two, uh, three actual different functions, but two versions of, of each one that doesn't use recursion and one that does use recursion. And all these functions are gonna be taking a list of values as input. So let, let, me, let me kind of look at this list here. The list is a class like you did for the last assignment. So to understand, if you just need to use a class, you normally don't have to see how it's implemented. So to use a class, all you really need is the header. Um, oops, pull that over there. So um, a list um, holds a list of integers in this case. So it's just a simple list. Um, so when you create a list, you can do things like um, you can use the indexing to find to actually set or find out what the value is of the list. So, for example, um, if, if I create an empty list, it's going to be um, the, the default constructor const creates a list of size zero with no values in it. Right. Uh, but you can also create lists that take a, a, a regular array of integers as input, kind of like for your, uh, I mean, exactly like the one you had to create for your large integer for assignment two. Uh, but in this case, it creates a list um, that holds uh, five values in this case. And, but you can use the, uh, we'll talk about overloaded operators, which we haven't got to yet, but kind of as a preview of that, since we've defined the indexing operator uh, for this list type, uh, you can actually uh, use that to read values out of the list. So in this case, uh, we've got five values. Uh, so you, so the, the short of it is, is that you can kind of use this like a regular array. Um, so I can read the value out, for example, read the value at index zero and test whether it's a one. So this is, this, again, th this is uncommon in just testing this implementation of the list that I gave you. You don't have to modify the list, um, you just have to use it. You can mostly use it like an array, but we added in um, some safety, right? So um, um, uh, yeah, you can also actually assign value. So if I assign the value to index zero, a new value five, after that, it will have the value um, five, right? Um, But then also it, it, it's a safer value. So uh, if this was a plain array instead of this list type, if you tried to write something to index five, um, it would allow you to do that. Or if you tried to read something out of index five, it would allow you to do that. Uh, C and C++ allow you to do that because it doesn't save you from making bounds checks, bounds errors. Uh, so reading or writing past the end of your array, right? but this list type does. So uh, whenever you try and access a value from this list using the index operation, um, if you try and do a value beyond the size of the list, um, it will throw a, a list memory bounds exception, or if you try to do a negative index, it'll throw, it'll throw a list memory bounds issue. So. Um, and there are other kinds of things that, that maybe we'll, we will see but that's the basic. So the, the kind of the main thing um, that this means for you guys though, is that uh, this list type um, keeps its size, um, its current size of the list. So whenever you pass a list into uh, the, the functions that you're writing for your assignment this week, uh, you don't have to pass in both the size and then the array of values, you just pass in the list because the, the list encapsulates the array of values. Um, um, and, uh, or sorry, uh, or, or I'm pointing to the wrong thing. So there it is. So, so the, the list encapsulates the, um, the, the, the the number of values in the list and it encapsulates the arrays, you know, but it, again, it's using a dynamically allocated array of integers like you had to do with your large integer, all right? 
All right, any questions about that? That's that's the, the list class that you're gonna be using um, for all the functions here. All right, so can I move on or a thumbs up or uh, anybody have a, a question what wants to ask about this list type here? All right, I don't see any no's. So, um, Let's look at the first task. So, so your uh, this unit is all about recursion. Um, so, uh, your your first kind of recursive function, or your first two functions, you have to actually sum up the values of the list. Um, so, actually, this is really kind of a duplicate of uh, what was it, the assignment one, where you had to write the function to sum up the values of an array. So, the only difference from the iterative version between this and that version for assignment one is you need to pass in a, a, the, the, um, a list instead of a, um, the array here, right? So, um, um, oh, actually two things. Um, so um, we're also kind of allowing, uh, this is kind of setting this up for the recursive version so we're allowing you to actually sub up like a sub portion of the list. So you can sum up sum up the whole list. So, so what you passed in is, is um, here, here's kind of the signature of the function. You have to pass in the list. Um, and um, hopefully I got this right here. Um, you're not gonna be modifying this list here. So you should be passing it in as a constant reference. Um, so if I didn't say that, in the assignment here. Um, so, so like you had to do when you passed in large integers for the previous assignment, um, um, these functions, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, yeah, that, that's right. So, so um, you shouldn't be modifying this list here. So, so we should be able to pass it in, I believe, as, as a constant um, reference parameter. Uh, but it takes two other parameters. So it takes like a begin and in index. And these are um, uh, these are inclusive. So like, yeah, if you have a list of six values, uh, the, the, the valid indexes, since we, we are using zero-based indexing again, like, like for regular arrays, the valid indexes are zero, one, two, three, four, and five for a list with six items. So if you wanna sum up all of the items of the list, you would say sum up the values from index zero inclusive to index five inclusive, right? But if you want to sub up a sub portion of the list, you would sum up the values from one to three of the list, right? So, um, oops, be careful with that. So, um, We can uncomment our first set of tests here. Actually, the second set of tests, the first ones though, for your sum iterative. Um, as usual, if you um, build at this point, you should get a compile error because um, the, uh, the function wasn't declared. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you one here. Um, uh, it should be passed in as a constant reference parameter. Yeah. So. Um, um, so in this case, you're going to be working in the um, uh, live the, the 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 file called librecursion. So we've got a header file called librecursion.hpp and an implementation file called librecursion.cpp. You're not writing classes, so we're we're not writing classes again. So you're just writing regular functions. So we, so so you're not putting like member functions in a class. Um, um, we're just going to be writing um, uh, normal C functions. Um, all right, so the function signature should look something like that, uh, except um, we're expecting a constant reference um, for our list here. Oops. Right. 
And um, yeah, if you add in the right signature, um, or at least that matches, um, so, so this is returning an integer as a result, is taking these three parameters, including the first parameter should be a list type. Um, uh, that'll probably allow the, uh, the, the test to actually compile, which it did, compiled in the object file, but we don't have um, our um, implementation yet, right? Um, oh, by the way, I gave a comment on this, um, and uh, now, so another wrinkle on this assignment, I believe, let me check here. So um, I am not actually giving you the function documentation this time. So you are required to write function documentation. Um, and I did want to give a little aside on this, all right? So, and I will give you the function documentation and even the function prototype. Um, we're, we're using doc oxygen for function documentation. So it should have this, this particular format, all right? And again, this is just um, what, it, what this is standard practice nowadays for writing code um, of anything more than like toy problems. Um, so the, the the format that we're following is you should have um, a brief description um, and then you should have um, a multi-line fuller description. So sum up the values. Uh, notice there needs to be two stars here at the beginning. Uh, that's a marker for the doc oxygen um, documentation generation here, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So, so this function technically uh, sums up a sub portion of the list. So we sum up and uh, return the sum of the values from begin index to end index of the list um, uh, where the indexes are inclusive. So, so we include the value at the begin index and the value at the end index, okay? So, and, and that implies that both um, begin index and end index must be valid uh, indexes of the list that's passed in. All right. So, you know, I, I mean, I would like you to try and, and, and give me a good description, you know, and a good description is at least a sentence or two. Try and use well written English, um, you know, um, and, you know, so this is just good practice. So, so I can tell the people who really understand the purpose of the, of the function that they're writing a little bit anyway from, from, how well that they can do on the function descriptions here, the, the function documentation, right? Um, so every function, um, you know, this is describing the implementation. This is, well, this is describing what the function does. So, you know, again, to use a function, you have to kind of know its name, you have to know its input parameters, its return type, and, and then, you know, you have to know what its purpose is. And this is sort of that, what the purpose is of the function that you're trying to describe here, okay? You also have to, to, to document the input parameters, right? So um, uh, here we've got three parameters. Each input parameter has to have an at param tag. So, so in this case, we have three input parameters. You have to have three at param tags. You have to, the, the, the name that you give for the parameter list has to match the name um, that you give in the function signature, okay? So those should match the, the name of the parameter and the name at the, the in the documentation. Um, I prefer that you um, kind of uh, uh, indent this by two spaces if, if you have multiple lines, right? And you should, you should try to keep all your code um, on 80 line limit. Um, so I, um, I think in our code formatter, 
um, we enforce maybe 120 line limit where it'll, uh, or maybe it's 80. Um, Uh, let me check it here. Uh, yeah, it's probably like 120, but you should try to keep it to, to 80, and I should probably change that um, to. Um... So anyway, that's not really part of my um, documentation, but. Um... So. Um... So the begin index, um, so that's the beginning of the sub portion um, of the list that we want to sum up and return. Um, I, I usually um, uh, visually, so, so this doesn't matter to the doc oxygen, but uh, I like to have a blank line between the description, and the parameter list, and uh, a blank uh, a blank line. Except for you know, you need you should have all you always have the stars lined up um, in line one here, um, and a blank line between that. So you have to also document the return value with an at returns tag. I think at return or at returns both work. Um, let's check that there. So here, the, this, you know, if it's, a, it's a void, if it's a void function, you don't really have to document the at returns. Um, you don't have to have an at return statement for void functions because they don't return anything. But if, but if it is a value returning function, you should document um, So the, the sum of the sub of the indicated sub portion um, is returned from this function. All right, something like that. Um, so let me show you how this kind of works here. Um, so you can use we've got Doc Oxygen set up, um, so you can generate your uh, reference documentation from your um, code project. You do have to use a terminal to generate the, the doc oxygen. So um, that is the um, um, reference docs target here. So if you do a make reference docs, what you'll see is that um, it creates some directories with the reference documentation in it. Uh, an HTML um, and um, a LaTeX. Um, so we can actually create PDF documentation using LaTeX, um, but you can um, um, look at the documentation. So here, uh, you can actually probably open it up inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm not certain if it has an HTML renderer. So like if, if you go to the HTML and look at the index, um, the HTML file, um, which is kind of the starting, oh, well, yeah, it opens it up as if you want to edit the HTML. So if you want to render that, um, I don't know. I mean, um, um, you know, you can probably add a plug, uh, add an extension to um, render HTML in Visual Studio Code. But I usually just, um, you know, uh, do a do a file open. Um, so, for example, if I if I browse to um, my repository, um, which I'm doing it on repos to SC two three three six assignment uh, assignment three. Uh, so, so again, you know, if you've got your dev box set up correctly, this should be being shared between your dev box and your host system. And if you generate the documentation on your dev box, you should be able to see it um, in here. Um, so you can do something like open up the um, index.html file. Um, and now at this case, uh, for example, I can open up my files list um, and look at my librecursion.hp file. Um, and so far we've only created the documentation for some iterative, but it's pulling all of this 
um, from those markup tags. So um, um, here's the, the brief uh, description. Um, oh, I thought, um, oh, the, the brief shows up. Um, hmm, I need to check that. Um, Oh, sorry. Um, maybe I meant to put a space in between there. So once you regenerate that, you should be able to just reload and it will reload. Um, there, that's what I was looking for. So, so normally, uh, if you do that right, so I get there, there should be a space in there. So. Um, if you do that right, you should only see the brief up here um, at um, the, um, the top here, and then you'll get the, 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 the fuller description down here at, at the full documentation, right? So anyway, so it's pulling the, the, the brief description, the full description, the, the parameter list from the at param tags, um, and the re returns from the returns tag, and it pulls, you know, the function signature and other stuff, so. Um, I mean, you know, the, 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 the function documentation, um, I mean, you can check that to make certain if you if you check that and, and you know, I might be giving you tasks if, if you're not formatting your reference documentation correctly, but you can check if it's correct. So, so if, if you um, just as an example, uh, if you don't match your parameter name for the documentation with the parameter name uh, in the signature, um, you should see warnings like when you make your ref docs, for example. So anyway, I mean, you can check that you're you're getting most of the the reference documentation correct or not, just from that. But but admittedly, that's just kind of um, this is just a nice feature. And this is another thing that you know, if you've got your environment set up correctly, this is standard. Most programmers expect to have this kind of stuff set up in their environment so that you can have your reference documentation um, being generated from your um, files. You know, so. But yeah, if you have that set up correctly, um, you should be able to auto generate that. Uh, in this case, using the doc oxygen tool for you. And, and um, um, you should get warnings if you're missing, like, like, you know, all these parameters should be documented. So, you know, if you don't have all your parameters, again, um, you'll get warnings about um, um, things aren't documented if, if you generate your reference documentation stuff. So. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, I, I will probably I would you're required to have your reference documentation. Um, you know, if, if your reference documentation looks really bad or is missing, um, I might generate an issue for you and make you do it. Um, but, um, um, you know, uh, anyway, you should try and get in the habit of creating that um, and, and having all those parts. And if, if you want to be sure that you are getting all the parts, you should run that uh, I mean you can run that um, and, and check that you're not getting warnings uh, from doc oxygen um, um, you, you can check um, doc oxygen and um, um, see if you're getting warnings or not so um, so, oh, not document because I didn't save there. Save again. So some some of this stuff should get formatted for you again. Front if you got your code style checker um, set up, yeah. So it'll at least align those for you. Yeah, I won't do that though. So anyway. Okay, um, but yeah, so um, I was gonna give maybe a few minutes for people, you know, I, I showed that was a little bit of an aside, but something you need to know now, starting with assignment three, um, the reference documentation, the, um, the, the code document. Oh, and also, by the way, I mean, I didn't, didn't say anything to anybody, but um, uh, for files that you change, it would be a good idea to go ahead and modify the author. And if you're a multi-group, use multiple author tags um, for that and for like your header file as well. But yeah, the, the thing at the top is an example of the file documentation, file header documentation. Uh, 
um, and 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 the and each function should have function documentation. And it's it's just a, a comment. It's a it's a comment block. So slash star star slash a regular C C plus plus comment, but with with special markup tags that Doc Oxygen pulls out for the reference documentation. So. So yeah, the 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 the, um, the the file header information again shows up um, um, at the um, where is it at? Um, oh yeah, hit there. So um, so it pulls this out um, from the the file header documentation. So. All right. Um, let me give a few minutes. Uh, so give me a thumbs up or yeah, it's, uh, back to the actual work that you need to do. So, so I actually gave you the, the, the prototype. I don't know if I ever tested whether the prototype worked there. So, um, um, but yeah, that, that should work to, to test uh, or to, to compile um, and then run the tests. But um, yeah, so in this case, you know, um, first failing one is down here at 186. So, so yeah, if, if you sum up a list with a single value, so notice the, the correct, um, if I only want to sum up one value, you have to, re, you have to specify that value both as the begin and in index, right? So, so if I pass in zero, um, um, that should sum up this list of size one and return a result of five, right? Um, so, and, and again here, we're, show, we're, we're, we're testing some of the um, summing of the sub portions of the list. So for example, if you sum the whole list, that should sum up to 35, but if I sum just the value at index zero, I get a three. And if I sum up the first three values, so from zero to zero, zero, three, that's, that's the values from zero, one, two, three, that's the first four values. So if you sum those up, you get um, 16, 21, 24, right? And if you ever ask, because the list throws a list memory bounds exception, you don't have to do anything special, um, I don't believe. So, um, uh, or that's not true. So. No, uh, so I'm right, um, I think. So you don't really have to do anything special uh, to get this list, list memory bounds exception. If you try, uh, so if you just write a loop as usual, um, but you try and, and uh, access the um, array beyond the bounds, um, uh, when, when you try and access your list uh, with an illegal bounds, it will throw the list memory bounds exception for you. So, um, Although, yeah, again, take that, that's another thing. So, so if you have functions um, that throw um, exceptions, you can document those using doc oxygen. So um, again, I probably wouldn't, um, I probably wouldn't force you, if you don't do this or forget it, I probably wouldn't, because I was kind of forgetting it there too as well. So, so, um, So if either of those beyond the bounds of the list, um, a list memory bounds exception is thrown by this function. All right. So yeah, so documents exceptions here. So notice it's all hyperlinked. So it has a link over to the particular exception class that gets um, referenced there. Um, all right, so yeah, it's already 11.45. Let's go ahead and um, I had thumbs up when I asked before. Let's, let's, let's see about task two, see if everybody has 
Hey, questions about that. Yeah, so um, um, this might be, you know, so I'll briefly do the other uh, four here, but um, so kind of the, 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 the whole purpose of this assignment though is about recursion, right? So if you've never wrote recursive functions, you're gonna get some practice writing three recursive functions um, um, in this unit here, right? So the general idea to attack the recursive function, so, so you can do the sum of, of the list of values in a recursive way, so the easiest way to do that, um, is um, like I talk about probably in the, um, oh, uh, not in this issue, but um, in the issue two, And I, I probably talk about it in the documentation for the for the assignment as well here, but um, uh, well, okay, I guess I talk about the same as what I have in the uh, assignment description. So, um, uh, for to write recursive functions, um, you always have to have a, a, an explicit idea of what the base case is and test for that. So in this case, if the sublist um, is empty. So, um, and you can get the size of the, the list. Uh, so when you're passing a list, remember this is an object. So you can ask for the um, um, size of the list using the um, um, get size member function, right? So if you're passed in um, an instance of a list, um, you can do like list.getSize. And if it's zero, so if, if the, the, the the size of the sublist you're asked to sum is zero. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, that, that's wrong. Um, I'm leading you down the wrong path. Um, so the, the whole purpose of, uh, so, so kind of scratch that there. Um, oops. Um, the whole purpose of the begin and in index is because you're explicitly gonna be specifying uh, the, the sub portion of the list here. So if the, the if the size of the sublist that you're asked to sum up is zero um, or one, um, those are kind of base cases. So, so if it's one, uh, if it's a size one, you can just return that item. So if the begin index is equal to the end index, um, you just return that value as the result, right? So if, if begin and in index are um, zero, for example, um, are, are equal, that's a base case and you return three as the sum. Um, if, if the in index is less than the begin index, so if I give you zero and minus one, that's an empty list. Um, so in that case, you should return zero, right? So, so um, I guess there's kind of, um, two base cases, right? So if it's size one, return that particular value as the sum. If, if it's a size zero, an empty list, return a sum of zero, right? Um, and then your general case is you're gonna return, uh, you're gonna call yourself recursively. So, um, um, So anyway, yeah, the, the general case. So if I ask you to sum all the values from zero to nine, the, the recursive implementation is, uh, so, so if the begin and index are not, uh, you know, if end is not less than, or if end is not equal to begin index, that means end is greater than begin index, like here. So in that case, I can calculate the sum recursively by taking the value at index zero plus the sum of the sublist from one to nine, or the sum of the sublist from the begin index plus one to the end index, right? So you call yourself recursively for begin index plus one to end index, which will give you the sum from one to nine, and you add that to the value at index zero. And that's your result that you re return in what's called the general case for the recursive function here, right? Um, All right, so the, the, the signature for the sum recursive should be the same as for the sum iterative. 
The only difference, it, it, the only difference is how you implement, right? And 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 what they're doing is the same as well. So, if you look closely at at these tests, uh, the the tests are exactly the same. The only difference is is we call some iterative um, for the task one test, and we call some recursive for the the task two tests, right? All right, um, any questions about task one or task two? Uh, so either thumbs up or give me a no or give me like a question or something here. Okay, didn't hear any objections to moving. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead to the, actually the next two tasks, reverse iterative and reverse um, recursive. So, um, okay, so there's a question about task two. Um, so uh, in general, yes, and I gave you the base cases and the general case, so the, the whole, the, um, the whole battle for being able to write a recursive function successfully is being able to correctly identify your base case or your base cases. Uh, and there can be more than one, right? So for, for task two, to write your, for all of these, when you're writing the recursive function, um, you, you probably want to start by just writing your base cases, right? So those represent the trivial cases that can be directly um, solved. Um, by a recursive implementation. So if you get the, the, the base case one for task two, so if, if you return zero, um, if asked to, re, to um, sum an empty list, that should allow you to pass the first test for task two because that's asking to, re, to, to sum an empty list. A, a list is empty anytime you ask to sum up a list where the in index is less than the begin index, right? Um, and then the second one, um, test the, the second best, uh, the second test uh, base case, right? So, uh, and, and this is also testing the, the second best case. So if you're asked to sum up a list of size one, the result should just be the value at that index uh, of the, the size one list or the size one um, sub list, right? So if you implement that first two base cases, you should be able to pass this test, um, and this test, and that test, and that test, right? But yeah, getting the base cases right is kind of more than half the battle for the recursion. And then uh, maybe not. So, so then after that, you have to write the general case. So the general case you have is the trickier. You have to actually write um, by calling the, the function itself on a smaller sub problem. And then taking that result um, to get your um, answer. So. Um, all right. So for the reverse um, function, um, an easy way to write the iterative version of the reverse is to use swapping. Okay. So I give you kind of the algorithm you should use. So. Um, um, again, the, the signature is the same, might be the same for all these, if I remember right. Um, so yeah, I think it is. But um, if you're given a, a list of, uh, and, and, and the begin and end index of a portion of the list that you're supposed to reverse, um, you can reverse the list by, um, in the iterative case, by um, as long as uh, the begin is less than the in index uh, that you're asked to reverse. You write a loop, um, you swap the begin and in index, and then you increment your begin index by one and you decrement the in index by one. And then you swap those values, right? So inside the loop, you're swapping the begin and in index values, you're incrementing begin and decrementing end, um, and then you go back and keep looping like that until the begin and in index cross. And at that point, you should have uh, reversed the list using a loop, using iteration, right? And then to do the same thing, but using recursion, um, your base case are, um, um, again, if the, the list is size zero or size one, uh, you don't have to do anything, 
right? So uh, a list of size zero or a list of size one, if you reverse it, the, the, the nothing happens to the list. So kind of by definition, um, re reversal of a size one list or size zero list is still the same list. So you can just return immediately. Um, for the recursive case, it asks to, re to reverse a size zero or size one list. Otherwise, you want to swap the, the values at the begin and the end of the subportion, and then you want to call reverse recursive recursively on begin plus one, um, um, and uh, that should be n minus one. So yeah, I got a, a mistake in my description, which could actually cause you problems um, if you um, um, implement that. So so you want to call it recursively on the list from begin plus one to uh, end minus one, right? So here in the description, I should be saying that you add one to begin index and you subtract one to the end index. And um, let me look at the um, task four here um, description real quickly. Um, yeah, I need to correct. Well, um, I won't be able to correct that for you, but um, um, so so yeah, that's that's a uh, actual problem in the description. So so when you call it recursively, you want to call it from begin plus one to end minus one, right? So 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 you um, swap the begin and end indexes, and you recall it recursively on begin plus one and end minus one there. So, So yeah, I kind of described it correctly for the iterative version. Iterative version, you increment begin and decrement end. Um, it has, it, I mean, it, it has to be able to, to reverse just the portion of the sublist if that's all you ask for. So for example, that's probably tested um, in the, the test cases. Um, So here we reverse the whole list. Um, so here we test like reversion, uh, reversing subparts of the list. So um, the list is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Before this part, if I say reverse um, iterative or reverse recursive um, on the list, just the subportion of the list from zero to one, the result is just uh, two, one, three, four, five. So it only reversed indexes zero and one. Right, so, but good question. But yeah, but but, but yeah, it, it, it you know your your implementation if you do it the way it's described uh, can do it just on a sub portion of the list. Uh, all right, um, yeah, it's twelve. So um, I'll just kind of wrap up. Let's talk about palindrome. Um, so again, the function once you figure out the function signature, and I actually already gave it to you. But once you figure out the function signature, you've kind of got that for all six tasks. Um, so is palindrome iterative and is palindrome recursive? Um, um, we'll have the same function signature. Um, so um, Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm misstating a little bit. So, um, um, so the, the sum actually does re returns a result. It returns the sum um, of the, the list or the sub portion of the list that has the sum. Uh, reverse iterative will be a void function. So it reverses the, um, um, and, and reverse recursive will, will be void function. So, it, uh, so the sign signatures are different um, now that I think about it. Um, so in this case, the, the, the result is returned by reversing the list in place, basically, right? Um, and is palindrome, um, um, oh, and, and by the way, so that means that you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't declare, uh, so, so, uh, so I'm taking back some of the stuff I said now. So um, 
the, the list that you pass in isn't constant for the reverse functions because you're going to be actually changing, modifying that list. So um, uh, you should pass in the list by reference, but um, 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 you shouldn't pass it in as a constant list um, because you're going to be reverse, you're going to be um, reversing the list or a sub portion of the list there. Um, and um, technically, um, so the is palindrome functions you need to return a Boolean result, true or false, uh, if the list is, is, is a palindrome or not. Um, so I require you to use the reverse um, list um, um, function for the is palindrome iterative. Um, so, um, but but yeah, you can still you can still uh, we asked this question actually um, in our first unit here. So you should be passing in um, the 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 list as a constant reference for the is palindrome iterative and the is palindrome recursive. Um, um, let me think about that. So, but but definitely for the is palindrome um, iterative. Because what you should do um, is you should make a copy of the list. So, so here's how you implement the is palindrome iterative. So, so make a copy of the list, reverse the, the, the sub portion of the list of this copy. So you can make a copy by just using the copy constructor like I, I, I described here. So, so if you just say list copy equals original, there's another constructor that's provided for the list type that will actually make a, a copy of this list. Um, and then you can reverse the, the sub portion of the list um, that you're asked to reverse, um, that you're asked to check if it's a palindrome or not, right? Um, so, so it's a palindrome if after you reverse that the, the, the copy of your list or the sub portion of the copy of list, if, if, the, 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 if that portion that was reversed is the same as the original, right? So in this case, um, if you're asked to check if the, the, the list from zero to index two is a palindrome, after you reverse the list, the, the, the copy of the list is gonna have the values three, two, one when you reverse it. And when you compare those, um, 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 the, 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 the sub portion of the list won't be equal um, if the list is not a palindrome. So, oh yeah, and in fact, I actually, th this is again kind of uh, testing that you kind of understand how to use the list um, object because I give you a, as is described here, I give you another um, operator. Um, so we give you the operator equal. So you can't normally do this with arrays, but you can do this with your list data type because we, we do what's known as overloading the um, the equality um, equal, the, the, the Boolean um, equality um, operator here, right? So what that allows you to do is check. Um, so after you reverse the list or the sub portion of the list, you can just directly check, okay, is the original equal to a copy? Um, and if they're equal, then they must have been palindromes. Um, and if they're not equal, then um, after you do that reverse, they weren't palindromes, right? So yeah, if you re if you correctly reuse um, the um, if you correctly reuse the copy constructor and the overloaded uh, boolean um, equality um, operator, um, your um, is palindrome iterative shouldn't be too complicated. Um, it'll be um, you know, you you will create a copy of the list using the um, um, the copy constructor. You will you, you need to reuse your uh, reverse iterative, um, or actually you can actually either use reverse iterative or re reverse recursive. Uh, either way, but you have to reuse one of your reverse functions to reverse the sub portion of the list, and then you can oh, you can reuse the um, equality operator to test. Um, uh, the original and the copy to see whether it is a, is a palindrome or not, right? 
Um, but for is palindrome recursive, um, um, I'm going to um, um, actually, you're going to have to actually implement it using recursion. Uh, and in this case, um, Um, oh yeah, so you're not swapping anything. So, so again, for both of these functions, you should be able to pass in um, the, the list as a constant reference parameter. And, and, uh, and you should do that because it, it shouldn't end up modifying. You know, so if you correctly make the copy, you won't be modifying the original list when, when you reverse the subportion of the list. And if you correctly do the recursion as is described here, you won't be modifying the list at all. So to do it recursively, um, again, your base case is if the list is size one or size zero, it's a palindrome by definition, and you, you can return true immediately, right? Uh, but if um, the list, if begin index is, if, if the end index is greater than the begin index, uh, you test so if the if begin and end are equal, you know, so to be a palindrome, uh, the, the the begin and end always have to be equal because if you swap them around, it's, it's a palindrome here, right? So if begin and end index for the case where the size of the list um, is two or larger, if they're equal, uh, if they're not equal, then you return false immediately. So it can't be a palindrome in that case. But if they are equal, you return, you do the recursive case. You, you call is palindrome recursive on the list from begin index. I got it correct this time from begin index plus one uh, to end index minus one recursively, right? So, but you only do that after you check if begin and end are equal for size two or bigger lists. And then you recursively call there, right? Um, yeah, but but is palindrome functions call re, return a boolean result, true or false, right? So um, so kind of um, I've been correcting myself as I've been describing things. So the function signature is different for all of these a little bit, similar but different. So all of these take a list and then a begin and end index. Um, so for the first and last tasks, the the list can, should be a constant reference because it, uh, the summing and checking if it's a palindrome shouldn't change the list that you pass in. Uh, but the reverse, um, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a constant because you're actually going to be reversing a list, the list or the, a subportion of the list in place. So it does modify the list that you're given, right? Um, and all of these return something slightly different. So we return an integer, which is the sum for the, the sum cases. Um, it's a void function for the reverse because we do the work in place um, on the list um, and we return a Boolean result, true or false for the is palindrome functions here. Um, okay, uh, last chance, so 1210 here. Um, I'm gonna try and usually wrap these up by 12 here. Um, but um, let's wrap up here. Um, any last questions here? Um, looks like I got a good recording on that. So as usual, I'll, I'll post this video as well. If people want to rewatch or for people that weren't able to join live here.